And I'm bet sitting in here right now, and I, I would guess some of us sometimes we feel like, why should I try to change, Nate? I've already been identified and labeled and marked by everybody around me. Why should I try to change, Nate? I already feel like I'm a failure and it's easier for me just to give up. Why should I try to change, Nate? You, you don't understand what it is to be what I've been through and the circumstances of my life. Why, Nate, you don't understand my culture, my upbringing, my home life. I felt like I never had a chance. No, I, I can't put myself into your shoes, but I can tell you that the things that I went through and who's in front of you right now, I promise you I would be your classmate sitting right next to you if I was 17 or 18 still living how I was living, man. I couldn't, I was that, I was that one. You couldn't talk to me, I was combative, I was, I was angry, I was, I mean, you just couldn't. I promise you, every one of you in here, regardless of what you feel like right now, of maybe sometimes when no one's around, you know, when you take off the mask, because a lot of us wear masks, a lot of times we, we mask the hurts and the pains and the wounds, and we have this image that we got to maintain, and we don't address some of the real struggles and stuff below the surface. But some of you, when you don't have all your buddies around and it's just you, when you see that young lady or that young man looking back at you in the reflection in the mirror, you want to change. But you're afraid of the failure. Change is tough. You don't feel like you can. And I want all of you to understand something. I don't care who you are or where you're at, if you're sitting in this room today and there's a heartbeat in this chest of yours and there is because you're here and you're alive and I can look at you, I promise you, there's not one of you that can't begin to take control of your life and to begin to change the course of what the direction of, of, that, of your life has been sailing. Like you are, I've learned this over my journey, I'm the author of my book, I'm the, I'm the writer of my play, I am the director at the movie. I'm the conductor of my train. I'm the pilot of my plane. I am the one in control of my life and none, no one around me can change or can stop me from changing me. Like I, all I have to begin to do, and this is what I learned when I was 23 years old, when I was in prison, when I got honest and I got real with myself and I stopped blaming moms and dad and I stopped blaming everybody around me and I stopped making excuses and I, and I stopped hiding behind my buddies and my goons and all this and I just was by myself and I looked in the mirror and I got real with myself. And I decided, you know what, enough's enough and I'm gonna change because the reality of it is all the people, what I've learned, I shared this in the last school I was just at, all the people that I compromised myself, those buddies and those friends, right, that crew of kids that I was running around with in high school, that I allowed them to, and their opinions of me, and what they thought was cool, and what they thought how we should be acting and behaving, I allowed so many of them to influence who I was, because I thought they were really my buddies. But when I went to prison, a mentor of mine in old school, a man named Petey, and he asked me a question. And he was trying to put some words of wisdom and knowledge on me, right? And he said, Nate, all your buddies that you got back home, how many you got? I said, I got like 10, man. He said, oh, really? You got 10, 10 guys that, they're your, your ride or die, they're your, 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 your goons, right, your buddies. I said, yeah, he said, let me ask you this question. I'm about two years into my sentence right now. He said, how many of those guys have written you a letter? How many of those guys have sit and put money on your books? I was like, what's the big deal about money on your books? He said, well, see, money represents time and thoughtfulness in here. And it's not about the fact that they don't have money, but even if they sent you $5, that means out there on the streets, they were thinking about you. They're not thinking about you. And so why are you here in prison so against trying to change your life? When those people that never had your best interests in mind don't care or think about you, they're not your guys like they think you're your guys. And boy, when he said that to me, there was a shift, a cataclysmic shift. Wow. And I looked in the mirror and I realized I'm not going to let the opinions of people dictate who I am anymore. If I want to be different and I want to change, I control that destiny. 
and I took ownership of my life. And I wrote down some dreams and I wrote down some goals while I was in prison at 23. And I want all of you to understand something. Good choices will always have good results. I promise you this. There are no such thing as a small choice. Every choice is massive because every choice is building or destroying something. Everyone, to wake up, to not wake up, to be respectful, to be disrespectful, to listen, not to listen, to do your work, not to do your work to be kind, to be angry. Every choice we make, we're building or we're destroying something. I promise you. And so what I realized when I was 23 and my back was against the wall and I had been labeled and identified and marked, that you know what, at the end of the day, there wasn't a parent, a teacher, a person, a friend. There's nobody on this planet with a heartbeat that could stop me from changing except one person and it was me. And even in prison, even in prison, I didn't have to conform to some society thoughts of how I was supposed to act and talk, and I had to take on the culture of a prisoner, of an inmate. You know what? I decided to make good choices in my life. I wrote down my dreams and my goals, and how do you eat an elephant? I'll tell every single time this. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. Yeah, it's big, and yeah, it seems massive, but one bite at a time, and eventually that thing will be gone. And so some of your dreams seem bigger than you. And some of you can't see or seem to perceive how can you change your life. It's simple. One choice at a time, man. And I'm telling you, we've got one shot at this. You don't want to get back in 10 years and have all these regrets and you didn't make choices to change some things in your life because of the, the influence of people. And now you're 10 years older and you haven't progressed or made anything of your life and you let all that potential that was inside of you, you just left it there. I started changing my life at 23 when I was in prison. Opportunities began to happen. You know why? Good choices will always be the breeding and the birthing of opportunity. When you make good choices, opportunities will happen to progress and to move your dreams forward. Good choices is the currency, it's the money to opportunity to become successful. Good choices, this is that simple. I started making one good choice after two good choices after three good choices after four good choices. Good choice after good choice, making the right decision. And you know what's right and what's wrong. You know what you should and you shouldn't be doing. You make enough of those good choices, that's, that's going to build up into time. And when you do something long enough over time, it will change you. You don't have to wait for anything. Good choices brings opportunities. When I got released four and a half years ago, five years ago, I didn't know how to become a speaker. I didn't know how to, to become to be somebody that gets to travel the country and to speak life. It's one thing to want to be a speaker. It's another thing to get people to bring you in and let you talk to people. But you know what? I took out the words I can't and I don't know how. I literally, I live by the motto, I can, I must, and I will. I will figure it out. I didn't know how to become a speaker. Came from a lot of brokenness, a lot of mess. But what did I do? I was just, I, I used my brain. I, I, I started thinking. I actually spent time on how can I begin to make this happen. I, I put time into it. See, we sit back and we want everything spoon fed and handed to us. We're a very microwave. We need it now. Instant gratification. I'm telling you, the number one tool, I don't care. Listen, we may be at this intermediate type of middle school. Where we made some poor choices and we're kind of in the, in the works of getting back into the flow. I'm telling you what, even all those students that are in the flow right now, it's so simple for you to get set apart. It's so simple for you to get one step ahead of all of them, because I'm telling you the culture that we're raised in, we're lazy. Nobody in our high school and our middle schools and colleges really do they want to work anymore. It's so spoon fed of Google this and Google that. We don't want to work hard. If all of you would just roll up your sleeves, get serious, take a stand, straighten up, get, 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 get some, get some just self-esteem and self-worth and start making some choices and work hard. Hard work is going to set you apart from the crowd. I promise you. See. You, some people may look and say, you know what? 
man, those kids are in trouble and they're at this school. You know what I see? I see a school that right now you have some downtime to get serious about your dream and start making good choices and work hard. And that hard work is going to catapult you above the rest. Those that are in the flow, I promise you, hard work will be the thing that sets you apart from everybody else. Because nobody out there in the world wants to work hard for nothing. You may not be the most talented. This is what I've learned. I may never be the most articulate, the most charismatic, the best communicator. There's always somebody that was probably going to be able to articulate their words in a better way in mannerism. But you know what they won't do? They will not outwork me. I can control the controllables, and that's how hard I work. That's how hard I refuse to quit. I didn't know how to become a speaker. What did I do? Five years ago, I had one little clip of a video that I spoke at when I was in prison at Ball State University. I had the the prison send it to me because they recorded it. I took that one little clip, I dressed it up with some documents and some other places that I had spoken at while incarcerated. I didn't tell them that I was incarcerated when I spoke there. I just gave them a portfolio of speaking engagements. I mailed it out. I took $300 of my own money that I didn't have. I didn't have a lot of money. I I, I went all in. I was willing to invest in what I wanted to become. I mailed out a hundred packets all across the state of Indiana, hoping that one school would actually take this CD, put it into their computer, look at a guy that they never heard in their life, and say, yeah, let's bring him into our school. You know what happened? I spent all that money. I waited. I waited. One school was crazy enough, and, and the principal actually got a packet on her desk, took it out, put it in, hit play, called me, paid me, negotiated, and brought me into their school. I had that one chance. I was prepared. I was bought in. I was committed. I went out to that school and I laid it on the line. I gave them everything that I had. Students were blown away. Lives began to get impacted. We saw behaviors begin changing in students. Teachers were were shell-shocked. Administrations talked. Two schools came, four schools came, eight schools came. Word of mouth, it spread. The first year I did eight. Three years ago I did 24. Last year I did 46. Right now, you're my 135th public, or 135th school in the country. I'm the number one book school speaker in the nation right now. And I'm telling you, I'm just a random dude like all of us in here, man. You can't tell me you can't do it. It's time for many of us to stop making excuses and go after your dreams and go after your goals, man. I'm just a dude that came from a broken past that refused to say I quit. I refuse to let the narrative of the people around me become my reality. It's my life that speaks and screams and shouts and I've just decided that I'm gonna let my life speak so loud that they can't ignore the sound. And that's the same mentality that a lot of you have to have. I promise you, everything inside of me, man, I promise you, none of you have made too many choices and mistakes. I genuinely, myself personally, I care about every one of you. I'm not here for any other reason for the fact that I believe in you.